Now we'll go on to making the grate. We take the bottom from the one pint paint can. You can use the straight edge that we have our emery cloth wrapped around. I'll take and divide that up just like it was a piece of pie and I'll divide it up into quarters. First, I want to kind of measure with my tape measure. Person should always have a tape measure in their pocket. Okay, that's approximately three and a quarter diameter. So I want to mark this at one and five eighths, going from right to left. And then I'll mark it here, one and five eighths from top to bottom, and that would make my center. Then I'll take going off of that, I'll take my, my straight edge, which I can use as a scribe. I'll divide it up into quarters. And then I will take my nickel, which is gonna be my template, place that right in the center. I'll scribe that around with my scribe because that'll be to what point when I start to cut my fins for my grate, that'll be the point where I stop. Now, I wanna take this disc and I wanna mark the outside edges with the top being noon. I wanna mark it one, two o'clock, already marked for three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, marked for six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, marked at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So I wanna mark those two points in between the top of the hour, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. So that'll be for my cut lines. As you can see here how it's marked, and that will be for our cut lines. To make it a little easier, take your straight edge, align them with the center and the corresponding line on the other side. Just like you're cutting a pie. There you go, cut into a 12 piece pie. Now we're ready to cut. We take our tin snips. What I find with the tin snip, instead of going multiple cuts, which causes more distortion, I will take my tin snips and line it up with the line. I will look down and look at the end of my tin snips to make sure they line up with the circle. And then I'll snip. That way, as you see now, there's distortion. There's one uniform distortion. If I cut multiple times, I'll cause multiple distortion. We'll continue, line it up, cut. Line it up, cut. Line it up, cut. Line it up, cut. As you can see here, we're nice and uniform. The two best things it does for you besides being a great, it helps cause a better turbulence to create a better burn. It also preheats the air as it comes in from the bottom. It also helps keep the ash self-cleaning. As you see here, how nice and uniform that came out for us. Now we're gonna wanna tweak this a little bit with our needle nose plier. It's cause that'll give us just the right angle to allow for the best mixture of air. Uh, we don't have to go too much farther, but we're well excellently started on the way. So take your needle and those pliers, tweak it, tweak it. See how I'm kind of walking around. I put my needle and those pliers right to the edge of the line, tweak it, and I press firmly with my thumb and my forefinger, great in place. That my thumb and my forefinger is in the anchor. That allows for the just that piece of the pie to be twisted when I use my needle nose. Now there we go. That's about the perfect angle that we want. And now you can see the nice little grate that we have ready to be placed into our fire pot. Now, as we place this down in our fire pot, you see now it kind of bounces around and it could fall out. As you can see, it's bouncing around. It could fall out. You're going to want to use beer can opener where you kind of make sure you're just above the grate and you 
be careful, kind of place it on the ground so you have control and come in, oh, not over a quarter of an inch. Do that at noon, do that at six, do that at three o'clock, holding your thumb behind so as not to uh, distort your can too much. Then again, here at nine o'clock. We want you want to take our needle nose pliers and kind of push the little tab down. And as you can see now, that'll hold our grate in place. As you can see now, we're not going to have to worry about it becoming lost. Now, we're ready to assemble our fire pot into our outer shell. Make sure you take your outer shell, place it firm on a firm surface. Take the, the holes and the open end without the rim and place that down into your one quart can. Press firmly and so it's seated. Look around your edge. Make sure that the one paint can rim is firmly against the one quart paint can in a rim. You can see here, got to go a little bit more over there. If you're having a little bit of trouble, what you can do, you can always take a piece of wood, a block of wood that same width on a firm surface and kind of tap it in. Now, if I was going to put that in now for permanently, I would have mixed my JB Weld, one part, equal parts, and then I would have placed that inside the rim before I put my can in there. I could also at this time use pop rivets or screws, okay? Or I could leave it as it is, because most of the time they'll sit pretty strong, sit just as they are. So now we've got our outer shell, inner fire pot, and our fire grate is completed.